What it do, Flight Crew? FTC. Flight T, stand up! We got the official 2024-2025 NBA player rankings. You guys know what we do. Look what we have here. The yearly top 100 official NBA rankings. Brought to you by ESPN. The NBA season starting in less than seven days. Let's see if they are on any BS in these rankings. And as usual, BS gets called out. All right, starting at 100. Simon Says, dude from the Blazers, pretty fine where he's at. CB3, pretty fine where he's at. He's pretty much at the end of his career. Get a chance to play with Wet Bananas, a top 10 NBA player of all time and right now. Um, and also curious to see where Wet Bananas is going to fall on the list in the ESPN rankings. But nonetheless, CB3 should really have a nice little roller coaster ride. At, bro, if I'm personally him, he should just be averaging 15 assists, bro. Like, just right off the bat. You know, this is a perfect opportunity to make yourself, you know, look good uh, to finish off the rest of your NBA career and finish off in the top 100. Do not blow it. Because I ain't going to lie, I feel like CP3 is about like 10 more bad games from getting that new generation disrespect. And what I mean by the new generation disrespect is just basically like the new NBA fans of like the newer generation. They're just like slowly trying to like basically just the Russell Westbrook type of effect and just like crazily just bash players that know they were at once nice but obviously they're in the later part of their career so um you know hopefully cp3 you know finishes nice strong with that uh we got mccallie and michaels pretty fine where he's at he's been a solid role player um he's been in the nba since silly bands with a style since i was in like 10th grade and stuff like that um he's never been an all-star but hey it's pretty nice to see that he's maintainly stayed in the top 100 he should pretty uh uh, uh finish off solid in his career we got uh Herbert Jones from the Pelicans. Who is this? Okay, I guess. We got Al Horford, uh, center for the uh, uh, the Celtics. Pretty fine where he's at. He's been a solid role player. He got a championship for the first time in his career. I think he's coming up on like 20 NBA seasons too. Um, pretty fine where he's at. We got Murray Keegan. He's fine where he's at. We got uh, Brooke Lopez. It's fine where he's at. We got Jabari Smith. Pretty solid right there. He got to the top 100 after his rookie year. I think he has potential um, to make an all-star game or a few within the next couple of years in the NBA. He's about 6'11 and a half small forward. Uh, there's a lot of potential right there. We got the Valencia Unis dude who's now playing for the Wizards. Pretty fine where he's at. We got Iggins Wiggins of Andrew. Pretty fine where he's at. Now, you know, obviously Will uh, Wiggins has been having, you know, uh, certain types of uh, issues, whether regarding certain injuries or like off, um, you know, the court issues. If you guys didn't uh, realize, he had a family member that passed away this off season um, and stuff, and what was the reason why he was away and had to, you know, leave during like personal issues whenever that was like, you know, brought upon and everything, and people were just making the craziest rumors, and you know, I I knew that it was just obviously those rumors was just never true. But, you know, uh, prayers out to Wiggins and stuff. If you didn't know, Wiggins also came out on social media and basically said out of, like, his entire NBA career, he's basically the most ready, like, to go this NBA season. So it's going to be exciting to see, you know, how he comes uh, about with my Golden State Warriors uh, throughout the year and stuff. Uh, we got the MPJ dude from the Nuggets. Pretty fine where he's at. We got Hartstein. Eh, I don't think he's a top 100 NBA player. Uh, we got Nas Reed. He's fine where he's at. We got Hot West from the Heat. Pretty fine where he's at. We got the Dork Dude from the OKC Thunder. He does not deserve to be in the top 100. He's pretty lucky to be there. Uh, we got McCollum. CJ's pretty fine where he's at. Ever since he left the Blazers, his gameplay has been kind of... Uh, I feel like certain players are just not meant to leave like their NBA duo. And, you know, I feel like McCollum playing next to Damian Lillard throughout his career kind of... Gave him like that boost, and now that he just doesn't have that duo and those certain chemistry attributes, his game is kind of you know kind of sub bar below average. I can drop him off in a one v one eleven two, um, but he's pretty fine where he's at right there. We got Smarter Marcus. He's fine where he's at. Um, I know he got traded. I think uh, what is he? Is he playing with the Nick or he's with the Grizzlies still? I thought he got traded. Oh, okay, somebody else maybe. We got uh, Mitchell Robinson. He's lucky to be in the top hundred. We got Miles Turner, who's lucky to be in the top 100. I feel like Miles Turner, for somebody that's his height, 6'11", 7 foot, you, you would think he would be averaging about 20, 25 
points per game with 10 plus boards. You know what I'm saying? Pretty, very below average. Um, so hopefully he can step it up this NBA season for the Pacers. Uh, we have Grant, Jeremiah Grant from the Blazers. He's lucky to be in the league. Um, okay. Fred Valet from the uh, Rockets. He was playing with the Raptors before. Uh, it's pretty fine where he's at right there at 79. We got Pods in the top 100 at a 78 overall. Or not overall, excuse me, but 78 ranking for the mile. Golden State Warriors. Uh, pretty uh, fine where he's at right there, too. I think he can go up in the rankings. I think he's going to uh, have a lot to prove, especially, you know, with Clay Thompson out of the lineup. He's going to have a lot more playing time. You have the McDaniels, dude. He does not deserve to be in the top 100. He is a solid role player for where he is playing at with the Timberwolves. But, no, he is not a top 100 player. Uh, we have Hero Tyler. He's fine where he's at. You know, Hero has been injured, I believe, the last past couple of seasons. But that does not mean that he is an all-star level NBA player. I feel like out of especially his past couple of seasons, this NBA season is the most approved. I feel like this season will make or break Tyler Hero. To be honest, I don't really see Hero playing with the Heat past February. I think Hero might honestly like get traded, you know what I'm saying, maybe to the Warriors. That will be a nice trade. I feel like... Golden State has a lot of potential to maybe maybe trade some like uh, two second round picks. Maybe we can get away with that because I see a lot of just outrageous trades in sports. People can just trade second round picks and just get nice all star players. So why can't we? Fuck it. Um, so let's see how Hero plays this season. We got Divincenzo, who used to play with the Golden State Warriors and now played for the uh, the Knicks and now. He is with the Timberwolves this season and lining up with uh, Ant Edwards and a uh, few more players. He was involved in that trade deal with Cat. I think he's pretty fine where he's at right there. Um, I think he, he should finish off the NBA season in, 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 in 70 and anything past that. Not not past it, but up, you know. So what did y'all say on that? Zach Levine. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. See, here, here's the BS. Here's the, the BS is coming in now. Oh, man. Where do I start? Zach Levine is legitimately top 35 of today NBA player. Not of all time, of a today NBA player. This is, and even see this is back on what I'm saying. You see on the bottom below of all these players, his 2023 NBA rank was actually 38. How did Zach Levine go all the way to 74? You're basically saying that Josh Tudor Jr., who's going to come right after him, Jared Allen, is basically a better player? Man, dog, like, what the hell are they thinking? What ESPN, what are you guys thinking, man? Now, I know that, you know, ESPN is obviously ran by multiple, multiple, multiple people. So I'm pretty sure it's probably based off, like, four different analysts that made these rankings. But, bro, how did you guys get Zach Levine, who was literally an all-star, like, two years ago? He wasn't an all-star last year, obviously, because he missed most of the season because it was some crazy injury. I just forgot. But putting him at 74 is so disrespectful, bro. How can you put the Zach Levine dude at 74 ranking, dog? This is crazy. And then next up, you have Josh Shooters Jr. at 73. Bro, no disrespect. And, and, and to be honest, my man Jared Allen, look, you got to thank me because I've been low-key, like, putting off for him of giving him, a, like, an, an OG role player from the early 2000s, Josh Childers from the Atlanta Hawks. You kind of resemble him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But, bro, wait, hold on. I didn't even know I was about to flame him for a second. I just looked at this. I didn't know he was averaging 17 points per game, but he's still not better than Zach Levine. I ain't going to lie. This paragraph right here saved him. Because I was about to flame. I didn't know he was averaging. I thought he was averaging like five, six points per game. All right, self-net. But I didn't go all the way with the flame, so not too bad. He's averaging a double-double, which is actually size 17 and 12. Uh, but, bro, to say that he is a better player than Zach Levine, seriously? You got Reeves. Pretty fine where he's at right there. He has a lot more to prove for the Lakers. Um, they got a couple of more nice uh, weapons on the offensive and defensive end, such as Bronny James. You got the new dude. Uh, maybe D'Lo might actually step up uh, for the Lakers at that point guard position. Uh, Lakers fans, uh, what do you have to say to this? Coming in next at 71, the former Golden State Warrior with the Mavericks now. Coming in at 71. And I ain't even going to lie to you. Just because Clay got traded from my team does not mean, you know what I'm saying, the respect does not continue. And I feel like that should be the same with anybody that is a true Warriors fan. Why is Clay Thompson from last year, he was ranked 
41, and now he is ranked at number 71. How do you guys feel about that? I feel like maybe you should put him at like 55. You know, definitely he had an absolutely crazy, terrible playoff performance. 0 of 10, we will never forget that, I understand. But, bro, to put him in 71, I really feel like Clay has a solid two or three years left in his NBA career. Now, if he plays like that, the way he played towards the end of the NBA season last year and finishes off with that, you know what I'm saying, um, 0 of 10 or 0 of 7 or whatever. I heard around, you know what I'm saying, word around the basketball streets. You went 0 of 8 or 0 of 9 in the preseason game, but I'm not going to say nothing too much because it's a preseason nobody cares about, all right? Next up, yeah, Bealer Bradley's fine where he's at. Um, crazy. Last season, he was ranked number 37. Actually, no, actually, this, this is actually perfect where you're at right here. You know what I'm saying? You have a big three with the Phoenix Buns, and you guys failed to make it out the second round, I believe. Oh, yeah, you're lucky to even still be in the top 100. You got a lot to prove. You got Jalen Green. Pretty fine where he's at. He actually rose in the rankings. Last year, he was at 80. Uh, I feel like Green has potential to become a real big superstar in the NBA. Um, he averages about like 21, 22 points per game. The Rockets have hella weapons. You know what I'm saying? They got, you know, Green. They got Fred Valet, my man Kenyon Martin Jr., uh, Jabari Smith, and uh, a few more other players, I believe. My man, uh, the Ty Ty Washington. Um, like, they, they got a lot of potential. You got Brandon Miller. Um, pretty fine where he's at. I think he's a solid role player for the uh, Charlotte. You got Kay Cunningham. He's fine where he's at at 67. Draymond Green, Green, Green. Now, I feel like respectfully Draymond Green should just by default be a top 50 player. Just given the fact that just how much he does for the Warriors. Now, I understand that he was absolutely being a menace to society last NBA season. Hopefully that doesn't transfer over because you guys know that we had plenty enough breaks and everything. We didn't make the playoffs. So Draymond Green was even speaking about, I believe, in certain clips that he has been, you know, Talking to therapists, don't quote me on it, but quote me on it. I believe he said that or whatever, like talking to therapists who just been getting a lot more rest and different, just mental, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just, you know, space and everything like that. So I don't think Green will be too toxic this NBA season, you know what I'm saying? You, you just, you just knock on wood type shit because who knows? But hey, I feel like he should be a default top 50 player. You got Monk of Willie for the Kings, he's fine where he's at right there. We got Emmanuel Quickly. He rose in the rankings from last year, 92 to 64. I honestly don't be paying attention to him like that, but now he is playing for the Raptors. He got traded midway throughout the last NBA season from the Knicks uh, going to the Raptors. So how do y'all feel about that? We got Chris Wannabe Michael Red Middleton. He's fine where he's at right there. Uh, you got the PCP dude at 62. Wow, he wasn't even in the top 100 the last couple of years. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. He is not a top 100 player at all. Um, yeah, he's not a top 100 player. Um, there's no way he has above 20 jersey sales. Um, but what do y'all have to say about this? He's a, he's a decent role player. I will give him that, but he's not a top 100 player. We got Josh Hart, who was another not top 100 player. Last NBA season, he was at the 91 ranking, and now he rose all the way to 61. Who are you talking to behind the scenes, brother? Josh Hart is another NBA player I can drop off um, in a 1v1, 11-2, 11-3, most likely. Uh, but what do y'all have to say? He is a solid role player, and he is a great hustler, though, for the Knicks. Um, he came up very huge throughout last NBA playoff season, but he is not a top 100 player, unfortunately. Um, he doesn't have a bag. Like, I'm sorry, I'm here to keep it real. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything <laughs> uh, with any of these uh, player rankings. So, moving on. We got Desmond Zane from the Grizzlies. Pretty fine where he's at. He didn't move at all that much and stayed in the same amount of rankings. He's a pretty solid role player uh, for the Grizzlies. Uh, what do you have to say for that? We got Caruso of Alex from the OKC Thunder. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think Caruso should be in the rankings. I think he should kind of climb his way back into the rankings because last season, you know, he had an injury. And in the year before, he actually wasn't even in the top 100 to even begin with. So unless this is like an error and he was in the top 100 at any given point of his career, then I take back from what I said. But you guys already know, I've been giving Caruso his props. He is a solid role player. But given the fact that what they're saying that last season even and the year prior, he was never even in the top 100 rankings. So why all of a sudden is he in the 59th spot? Who knows? Uh, we have Kobe White, I guess, because he had to replace Caruso and Lonzo Ball from last season, remember, uh, from them, their, their injuries. He averaged 19 points his career high. 
from the last NBA season. Got a little cotton mouth in his bed. My bad. Uh, we got uh, Darius Garland, the garlic dude from the Cavs. Pretty fine where he's at right there. We got Lively. Wow. Just because they went to the finals that you go from a non-ranked player all the way to 56? Slow your roll. <laughs> now, Lively, we did give him his props uh, throughout later part of the NBA playoffs of last season. I believe he is a maybe a number 90 ranked NBA out of a top 100. Not a 56 just yet. What do y'all have to say about that? We have Justin Jackson from the Grizzlies. Pretty fine where he's at. He won Defensive Player of the Year, who I feel like Wet Banana should have won, but I guess. We got the Shampoo dude from the Rockets. I believe he deserves to actually be in that 54 rank. We reacted to a couple of Rockets games last season, and Shampoo actually had a couple of 30-plus point games. I believe he even had a 40-point game, if I'm not mistaken. He actually has a a, a bag. Um, you know, especially he's kind of undersized. He's about like 6'9", 6'10". You know, for a power forward center, so and I actually actually forgot about it in, in terms of putting him into that that rocket core lineup. Uh, my bad about that. Uh, to go along with the other weapons, along with the Rockets, I think the Rockets might make a late playoff run and get dropped off of my Warriors in like the third round. Uh, but hey, I, I, I see it happening. You got R.J. Barrett. Um, I think he's pretty fine where he's at right there at number fifty-three. You got Franz Wagner. I don't know about being fifty-two. Maybe, maybe, maybe like the 80s and the 90s. We got OG and a booty. Uh, he's fine where he's at right there. Whoa, whoa, I went down too far. And I just seen the ranking for Ant Edwards, who was at 10. But, okay, so after that 51, um, we're going to 50 through 11 now. My bad by, uh, about that, guys. It was a whole article just jumped ahead. All right, going into 50. LaMelo Ball! From the Charlotte Hornets. Pretty fine where he's at right there. I think LaMelo is going to have a lot to prove this NBA season. We all know, I already know that LaMelo Ball is a superstar in the NBA. But he's been having multiple injuries these past couple of seasons. That he's only been able to play about, like, what, 20 games the past uh, two years. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, he gets back into the you know swing of things. And, you know, he gets back to that, you know, what we know he is a superstar player as. We have Gordon Averian. He's pretty fine where he's at. The Nuggets playing, you know, with Jokic and everything. I think that's a pretty good solid role and pretty good ranking right there. And he, I believe he won a dunk contest a couple of years back. They're close enough. You got Randall LeJohn, who is now a Minnesota Timberwolf. Pretty fine where he's at right there. You got uh, Mobley Evan. Um, I think he's a little bit too high. I think he should be in the 80s and 90s. We got Porzanius, who should be in the 80s and 90s. Dima Dios, and I think he should be in the top 35s. Now, I don't know what's going on with the disrespect of DeRozan from the 2K, uh, you know, with them not giving an upgraded face scan, um, and then also with the rankings right here. DeRozan is an easy top 35 player, um, and, you know, he's playing with the Kings now uh, next to Fox or De'Aaron, so I think they're going to raise his rankings a little bit lower uh, throughout later in the year. We got Jalen Williams with the OKC Thunder. So you're saying he's better than DeMar DeRozan. This is what I'm saying, man. Like, y'all having a couple of BS rankings here. Jalen Williams, literally last NBA season, he was ranked at number 95. Now, Jalen Williams is a solid role player. We're not going to take that away from him. You know what I'm saying? Will he be an all-star in his NBA career? No. Will he make the Hall of Fame? Hell no. But he is a solid role player, and he does bring a lot of energy to OKC. Um, and everything like that. But I believe he should be where he was at last year, at 95. How did he get all the way from 95 to 44? Okay. We got Murray DeJounte. Pretty fine where he's at. He got traded maybe to a better team if they should, everybody can stay healthy. Uh, he played with ATL last season. Um, let's see how he plays with the Pelicans. You got Cy Condu from the Pacers. He is a little bit too high. Uh, he's pretty fine where he's at. He was ranked number 25 last year, so I don't even know how he got to 40, 25 to 42, but yeah, he's fine where he's at. I take that bet. You got Fear the Beard, James Harden. He is way too high. He should be a considerable top 30 NBA player. Um, people are really underestimating James Harden. Like, like, you cannot expect them to have a 2017 year every single year. That year that he had was just absolutely insane. You're not going to replicate that same year every single year like okay so i feel like the expectations for harden have been kind of increasing for no apparent reason now he is still playing with the clippers he's playing next to Kawhi. uh pg is not there this season so he may get a, a few more touches 
um, and, and a few more opportunities to just, you know, chuck more shots up just given the fact that he doesn't have another another All-Star right next to him. Well, he I mean, outside of PG. Kawhi's an All-Star. I meant to say, like, another of an All-Star of an All-Star, if you know what I mean. Get my words mixed up. You know what I'm saying? That duck pack. <laughs> but check me out. You know, Harden playing next to Kawhi, another All-Star. He doesn't have three All-Stars. It's another one All-Star, but you get it. We got Andrew McBrandon at uh, the Pelicans. He's fine where he's at right there. You got Derek White. <laughs> this guy wasn't even ranked last year. And just because he tagged along with Tatum and Brown to win an NBA title, you guys are putting him at number 39. So you're saying that he is better than Draymond Green. You're saying he's better than DeMar DeRozan. You're saying that he's better than Zach Levine. Are you kidding me? Derek White? Bro, where do I start? I've already said what I needed to say. Even debate with him playing... Next to Team USA off the basics of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? He shouldn't have even been in the same doors as the glorious King Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? And then he was in the same doors as LeBron and all the other All-Stars. Like, I don't even know how that was even possible to him playing on Team USA with the other All-Stars that wasn't even on Team USA. All right? But now he is ranked number 39 um, out of a top 100 to go into this 2024-2025 NBA season. This is absolutely one of the worst rankings I have ever witnessed. Yes, 100%. One of the worst. Come on, guys. What are y'all doing? If you put Derek White on any other NBA team, he's gone after 15 games overseas. We have Mikael Bridges at 38. I feel like he's a little bit too uh, high or low, whatever you want to call it. He needs to be in like the 80s and 90s. He's not that good to be in a 38, bro. Trey Young. So, like, this is what I'm talking about. You have Mikael Bridges and Derek White in the same category as Trey Young. How does that make sense? Like, we don't even need to explain how much of a damn lead Trey Young is compared to them last two I just mentioned. And last season, he was at number 27. How did he go all the way to 37? Why is people continuously getting comfortable disrespecting Trey Young? You know what? If I'm Trey Young, bro, and it just seems like the Atlanta Hawks don't do anything to back him up whatsoever. I'm asking and demanding for a trade 15 games in the NBA season. Let me get my cool little 35-plus points per game to still show the NBA that I got it. You know what I'm saying? Get my stock sky high. If I'm Trey Young, I'm demanding a trade, bro, because this is getting ridiculous. They are overlooking talent. Trey Young is literally my top 15, top 20 favorite NBA players of right now in the league. And I've been continuously seeing now. For granted, he is a roastable NBA player. We're not going to just like, you know, just like sugarcoat it. Like, definitely get your jokes off. But you cannot deny him being a superstar, all-star player. And, bro, from 27 to 37 and being in the same conversation as Derek White and Mikael Bridges is absolutely diabolical, bro. All right? Trey Young got to go to a team like the Heat. Man. Next up, you got Drew Holiday's fine where he's at right there. You got my man Scotty 561 Mons, who made it into the top 35 NBA uh, rankings right here. I believe, honestly, he should be maybe into the top 25. If you think that's a reach, I guess, but I think he should be top 25. But this is a good start right here. All the way from ranking 63 last NBA season, and now he is a 35-ranked player. Scotty Barnes, in my opinion, I think after this NBA season, is going to be one of the top seven faces of the NBA. Um, and, bro, it, it's much deserved, bro. Uh, you know, the Raptors um, are very lucky to have a player like him. I think the Raptors can make a deep playoff run if everybody stays healthy. I think Scotty is going to have a real, real breakout NBA season this year. Um, and, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Mark my words with that. Next up, you got Rudy Gobert for the Timberwolves. Um, hey, he rose up in the rankings 64 to 34. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, the man, Rudy Gobert. Uh, hey, man. You know, Rudy, Rudy's FTC, even though we be roasting him, you know what I'm saying, left and right. But it's much deserved. He's going to be having a different lineup this year. Let's see how he, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, goes uh, and, and, and follows through with it with Randall LeJohn back there. And then Ant Edwards, of course. And then, you know, you got Dillingham. Bro, they got a squad, bro. They got a squad. You got the Mark Cannon dude from the Jazz who was supposed to go to the Warriors. But, unfortunately, he just didn't want to. He's fine where he's at right there. You got Shet at 32. I think he should be in the 50s. 
You got Murray and Jamal at 31. He went from 17 to 31 last NBA season um, in the rankings. Wow. How do y'all feel about that, Denver Nugget fans? You got the man Cat in the top 30s now we're getting into. The man Cat, um, he went from 20 to 30. I think he's going to get back into the 20s uh, once uh, you know he plays with the Knicks throughout this uh, NBA season. You got Sabonis Sabonis as a top 30 NBA player. This is getting a joke. This is becoming a joke, man. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you kidding me, bro? Sabonis Sabonis? You got Sabonis Sabonis, man. Sabonis Sabonis. Man, where do I begin? Sabonis Sabonis. He deserves to be in the 70s, man. You got Butler and Jimmy at the 28 with the Heat. It's pretty fine where he's at. Zion Williamson at 27. I'm actually going to give an applaud right here to ESPN for giving him in the top 30s, given the fact that he has been injured the past couple of seasons. But that does not mean that he has not displayed the absolute superstar athleticism and generational superstar athleticism that Zion is presenting. He is far from an NBA bust. Um, he's the former number one overall pick, right? Yeah, number one overall pick. He has been living up to expectations. Um, and, hey, I think he's going to be showing a lot more coming this NBA season. Next up, you got Foster D. Heron, who's fine where he's at, number 26. Kyrie at number 25, pretty fine where he's at. Proud of the NBA for getting him in the top 30s. Nice right there. You got the Paolo dude at rank 24. Paolo is a, I think Paolo is probably the most underrated NBA all-star superstar of today's NBA game. I feel like for some reason, like, he is blackballed and don't, like, you know, like, say this is a reach whatsoever. I feel like it's a fact. Paolo has consistently put up about 24 to 25 points per game this last NBA season, and nobody talked about it whatsoever. Now, I will take a little bit of a blame for not reacting to a lot of Magic games last season, and I will vow to react to more Magic games this NBA season because, in my opinion, Paolo kind of reminds me of a rookie Carmelo Anthony from back in the day. This guy is filled with talent. And, hey, I just feel like nobody really talks about power like that throughout the NBA. It's very weird. Um, I think he's going to be uh, – he's going to have a breakout NBA season this year. And, hey, man, he's going to uh, he's, he's, – I think he's going to come up and show some crazy games. You got Damian Lillard with the Bucks at 23. He's pretty fine where he's at. Uh, last NBA season, he had a little mid-NBA season, but still averaged 24 points per game. Still played at an all-star level. And, you know, obviously made the all-star team and stuff like that. But given the fact that you're playing next to a Kukbo, you guys are considered a super team. So I feel like they had a lot of disappointments throughout last season. Let's see how they finish off. You got Kawhi. It's pretty fine where he's at right there. Hopefully, man, I really hope Kawhi plays at least 50-plus games this NBA season. I feel like if he does play anything less than that, people are just going to write him off. Honestly, man. So let's see how he, uh, it turns out. You got the man Paul George. Uh, who recently in sent prayers to him. He had a hyper-extended knee um, in the preseason game. Um, I've seen a news report about that in the clips. Um, so, you know, Paul George, hopefully he will be ready to go this NBA season. Um, it's unfortunate because, the, you know, the Sixers have a super team, you know, and given the fact that they got, you know, Embiid and, uh, you know, Maxi and Jerry McCain, it's going to be a pretty fun lineup. So hopefully Paul George is able to play within the first 15 games. Um, and then after, you got Jaja. Who I actually am proud of ESPN for actually putting him into the top 20s. Um, you know, given the fact that last NBA season, you know, he uh, was limited to the amount of games. Uh, you know, with the injury that he had, and he's about to come back strong. He did have that ankle injury in the preseason. Uh, but now he is about, you know what I'm saying, to come back. Um, I think he's going to have a breakout year. I think he's going to have a uh, comeback NBA player. Not even that, just maybe comeback sports player. Um, this year coming up in 2024, 2025, and everything like that. Ja Jaja has grown to uh, you know be my uh, favorite top seven NBA player of right now, and everything like that. So I'm actually excited going to be seeing a lot of Grizzlies reactions of uh, this NBA season coming up. You got Tyrese Maxey from the Sixers, who actually rose from the rankings 42 from last season to going to 19. I think it's pretty fine where he's at right there. Tyrese definitely came up big in big games, especially with Embiid of Joel being out because of that knee injury last season. You got Ad the Mayo from the Heat, pretty fine where he's at right there. You got Mitch Ladonna from that 17 uh, ranking, pretty fine where he's at right there. You got Halliburton. Now swap out Mitchell with Halliburton, and I would not say Halliburton is better than Jaja. That's true. You're saying Halliburton is better than Jaja, Kyrie Irving. Even Scotty Barnes, nah, nah, nah. They got, they got to fix that. 
You got Booker at Devin, 15, Rankin. Find where he's at. You got Brown and Jalen. Find where he's at right there at 14. You got 13, Rank Anthony Davis. Find where he's at. You got Brunchin. Find where he's at right there. You got Wet Bananas. All right. And ESPN. Wet Bananas is a top five NBA player. All right. You guys are fucking up right now. This is, yo, come on. Do we got to explain? I cannot wait to react to these San Antonio games this NBA season. I've been seeing a couple of clips of him playing in the preseason, which I told you guys nobody cares about the preseason, so that's why we have been reacting to all the NBA teams outside of my Warriors. Uh, but nonetheless, he's going to be having a breakout NBA season. He's going to prove why he is a top five NBA player of right now and of all time. All right, you got this wrong right here, ESPN. This is bad. He is not number 11. He is top five NBA player. All right, going into the top 10s. Here we go. Now, as we saw by accident earlier, Ant Edwards is in the top 10. He is fine where he's at right there. Ant is becoming one of the faces of the NBA. He had a very good breakout uh, past two NBA seasons. Uh, let's see what he got to prove this NBA season with a brand new squad. Next up, Kevin Durant. I'm happy Kevin Durant is still getting the respect he deserves being in the top 10. Despite him bouncing around from team to team like a blunt, he is respectfully still a top 10 player and top 15 player of all time, Kevin Durant. I hope he can stay healthy and, you know what I'm saying, all throughout this NBA season. Um, Kevin Durant is easily averaging 27, 30 points on any of your favorite team, including mine. I wish he didn't leave the Warriors, but thanks to Draymond Green, other things was playing. You have Embiid and Joel. Now, I ain't going to lie. We got to give respect to Joel where it is due. Now, he's had a couple of 50-point games these past NBA seasons, and, bro, what – can I possibly say? Now, all he has to do is stay healthy. And if you've seen from last NBA season, he was actually ranked at three. Now, because he got injured, he fell in the rankings a little bit. You have... LeBron! Now, I'm not even going to lie to you. Humbly, LeBron, regardless, should be a top five NBA player. All right? Now, where you put him in the top five is up to you. But top five of all time... And right now, he has to be in the top five. You know what I'm saying? It is at seven rate. It's not like he's ranked number 34, but you got to put him in the top five. Do we even need to explain the longevity? You know what I'm saying? He got Bronny James, going to be a future all-star. You know what I'm saying? Father-son duo incoming throughout this NBA season. Um, next up. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Come on, ESPN. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? You couldn't just squeeze Steph Chef, look at Wardell Curry, man, into the top five. You had to be petty and put him outside that top five bubble. You had to be petty and put him outside the top five bubble. Come on, bro. Do we need to explain? Steph Curry is the number one player of right now and of all time. Had plenty of rest with the Warriors not making the playoffs last NBA season. The Warriors are going to be the team to watch, the team to go out and prove this NBA season. ESPN, man, this is bad. This is bad, man. Now, you had a chance to save yourself in these rankings by putting Curry at least in the top three. And you failed to do that. These are definitely one of the worst top 100 rankings of all time. You almost had a comeback. You have to to put Curry in the top five. Last NBA season, you had him in the top five. Why is he out of the top five this NBA season? <laughs> There's no excuses. We don't need to explain all the accolades. We don't need the, it's, a, it's a Santa Claus list of accolades. Real basketball hooper hoopers like myself know. ESPN, why is Curry not in the top five? Next up. You got, so you're saying Tatum is better than Curry and LeBron? Tatum is a top 10 player. He is my top 15 favorite player in the NBA of right now. Yes. But he is not better than Curry or LeBron. Just because he won a championship. We did it! Bro, he is not better than Curry or LeBron. Come on, ESPN. What are y'all doing? Now, Tatum is a superstar. And respectfully, a top 7 face of the NBA. I've said plenty of time, uh, you know, Tatum has a very good character and a very good, you know, um, you know, personality about just how he just goes about certain things. Yes, but when it transfers over to skill, come on, 
He is not better than Curry or LeBron. SGA. Oh, my goodness. Now, I will say after last season, SGA is a top five player, but he's not better than Curry. What are y'all doing, bro? Maybe he's better than LeBron from last NBA season, but not Curry. Now, I'm not mad at them putting SGA into the top five. He is a top five NBA player after last season. 32, 33 points per game. Come on. Like, but not better than Curry. Next, Akunpo. Now, I'm not even going to lie to you. I honestly feel like Akunpo, after last NBA season, he still had an all-star NBA season, but it was kind of mid. Wasn't it? The, the, the bus should have made it a little bit further in the NBA playoffs. Now, I believe Akunpo was injured a couple of times. Last NBA season, they had him at the number one rank, and now he's number three. I believe Akunpo, don't you think he should be like maybe a 11th or 10th rank player? Not in the top 10. Maybe? Nah, maybe top 10, not in the top 5. Next up, Donakick. He deserves a top 5 player. Not better than Curry LeBron. No. And I haven't heard his name whatsoever. Who can I have guessed is going to be coming in at number 1? Jokic. Now, Jokic and Donakick are top 5 NBA players 100%. Yes. Superstars of the NBA, yes. Future Hall of Famers, yes. You can even arguably say top seven faces of the NBA, 100%. But to say that Jokic is better than Curry is just disrespectful on all levels. There y'all have it, man. We got the official top 100 list of ESPN of the 2024-2025 NBA season. Whenever they have the updated list, which usually... Is around playoff time, or maybe we can do an update if they have an updated one by All Star break. Let me know, and we'll follow it. Um, I want to say this is the this isn't the worst list. It's definitely up there, but it isn't too too bad. Some certain rankings are actually on point. I'm actually proud of some certain rankings being there, but it still has to be in one of the categories of one of the worst lists, man. Because Curry is not number one. You messed up, ESPN man. Messed up, man.